Our Prophet predicted the coming of one man and his name will be Muhammad ibn Abdullah and he will be called by the people the rightly guided which is the Mahdi the world will be a very very depressing place before the Mahdi the earth will be full of injustice and the Mahdi will come and fill it with justice and with truth this man is the final of the minor signs of judgment day and that is the Mahdi and the Mahdi will be a link or a bridge between the minor signs and the beginning of the major signs between the minor signs and the beginning of the major signs and the beginning of the major signs will be the coming of the Dajjal that is the first of the ten major signs the Mahdi will be alive when the Dajjal comes so the last of the minor signs, the first of the major signs will coincide with one another and the Mahdi will see the coming of Dajjal. He will fight Dajjal but will not be successful. Then the second of the major signs will come and that is Isa ibn Maryam. And the Mahdi will be alive at that time and the Mahdi will fight in the army of Isa and then eventually Isa will be the one who kills Dajjal and then there is no mention of the uh, Mahdi. What exactly is this concept of the Mahdi? Is it true or is it superstition? Do we really believe in it? Are there authentic evidences? Or is it something that, you know, people have just invented to, uh, you know, misguide uh, humanity? Now, before we begin, what exactly is the word Mahdi? The word Mahdi comes from Hidayah or Huda, which means guidance. And Mahdi means the one who is rightly guided. So Mahdi is a, a name. Maybe one of you is called Mahdi. It's a name. And some of the Khulafa were called Mahdi. And one of the famous Abbas al Khulafa, his father called him Al Mahdi, meaning the rightly guided one. And there's nothing wrong with the name, but in this case, Mahdi is a title, not a name. And it means the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has rightly guided. Where do we get the information of the Mahdi? The Quran has nothing directly or indirectly about the Mahdi. There is no verse that even indirectly references the Mahdi himself. But we have over 20 ahadith about the Mahdi that are authentic. Some of them in Bukhari and Muslim, the most famous book of hadith after Bukhari and Muslim, which is Abu Dawood, it has an entire chapter called the chapter of the Mahdi. He entitled a chapter, the chapter of the Mahdi. And in it, he has over a dozen ahadith, different ahadith about the Mahdi. So Abu Dawood, the, the muhaddith, the scholar of hadith, is writing in his famous book, an entire section called the section pertaining to the Mahdi. Sunan At-Tirmidhi also has the chapter about the Mahdi. And in the chapter title is the word Mahdi. Some of the great scholars of hadith, they mentioned belief in the Mahdi as being one of the signs of judgment day. And therefore, it is correct to say that the vast majority of scholars of our tradition, they affirm the concept of this righteous person coming towards the end of times. And they uh, believed in this concept. Now, we are going to mention, inshallah ta'ala today, the difference between what we believe and what some of the other groups believe. But Sunnis, generally speaking, we do believe in the Mahdi. Why? Because it's in the books of Sunnah. It's in the books of Hadith, and we affirm the books of Hadith. So, let us now mention at least 10 or so of these Hadith, and from them let us derive some of the characteristics of the Mahdi. Of them, authentic hadith in Sunan Abu Dawood, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, hadith is in Abu Dawood, if there was only one day left in this world, Allah would make it longer so that a person from my family, my descendants will come, whose name is the same as mine and whose father's name is the same as my father's. And he will fill the world with justice like it had been filled with injustice. This is the most authentic Hassan hadith about the Mahdi. From it we learn three things. Well, more but at least three. Number one, 
the name of the Mahdi will be what? Muhammad. Number two, Ibn who? Ibn Abdullah. Number three, what will he do? Fill the world with justice as it had been filled with injustice. Now we can also add one more point here. Number four, when will this happen? Towards the end of times. Because the hadith begins with what? If there's only one day left, Allah will make it longer. Which means the Mahdi will come towards the end of times. Now, who is or where will this lineage be from? In Sunan Abu Dawood as well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al Mahdiyu min itrati min waladi Fatima. The Mahdi is from my family, from the children of Fatima. How many children did Fatima have in terms of sons? Two, Hassan and Hussein. So the Mahdi will be from Hassan and Hussein. Which of these two? There's nothing authentic from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but Abu Dawood said, uh, through an isna that he takes to Ali radiallahu an, that Ali radiallahu an looked to his son Hassan and he said, This son of mine, Hassan, is a leader because the Prophet called him a leader. And from his children shall come a person whose name will be the name of your Prophet and he will resemble your Prophet in mannerisms but not in manner. He will resemble the akhlaq but not the, the physical face of the Prophet ﷺ. Ali radiallahu an is saying what? The Mahdi will be from whose lineage? Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And this is the predominant position. Ibn al-Qayyim mentions the majority of our scholars say the Mahdi will be from the children of al-Hassan radiallahu an. This is in contrast to the non-Sunni group. You know there are two big groups in the Muslim world and I try my best to not mention names so as not to invoke or provoke any animosity. We, we, we don't teach, pay, I will never teach hatred of other Muslim groups. That is not my philosophy. But we should educate and we respectfully disagree with the non-Sunni group and the non-Sunni group it says that the Mahdi is from the children of Hussein and they have their 12th Imam that they're waiting for and they call him the Mahdi and this is one of the differences between us and them of many many differences and Ibn Qayyim also mentions an interesting point here that it is befitting that the Mahdi be from the progeny of Hassan because Hassan radiallahu an he gave up the Khilafah for the unity of the Muslims and Hussein radiallahu anhu, and there's nothing wrong with this, he strove for the Khilafah thinking, and he was right in that assumption, that he would be good and better than the person in charge. But in that, a tragedy happened. So Hassan radiallahu anhu gave up the kursi after having had it. So Allah will bless him with his progeny to get the kursi back. And Allah will bless him that of his progeny will be the real and the actual Mahdi who will eventually unite the Muslim ummah and fill the world with uh, justice. So of the hadith about the Mahdi as well is the hadith reported also in the Sunan of Abu Dawood that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Al Mahdi minni. The Mahdi is from my children, my progeny. And his forehead shall be large and wide and his nose will be aquiline. So the nose is not going to be a flat nose. It's going to be an aquiline, a sharp nose. And the forehead will be larger. So in other words, like you, you know, some people they have a large forehead. So this Mahdi will have a large forehead. The Prophet wasallam said, Al Mahdi minna ahl al bayt. The Mahdi is from us ahl al bayt. Yuslihuhu Allahu fi layla. Allah will rectify him and make him righteous in one night. What does this mean? Our scholars mention that this means the Mahdi will grow up and people will not assume that he is a very religious person. He might be an average Muslim, maybe, maybe even below average. But something will happen and in one night the Mahdi will become a righteous person. And this gives hope to all of us who are sinful. That if even the Mahdi will start off at a low level, and something will trigger and Tawbah will take place, and the Mahdi will repent and become such a righteous person. So even the Mahdi, his lifestyle at the beginning of his life will not be at the end of his life. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah will change him and correct him in one night. Correcting means he was incorrect. Salih means he was not Salih before that night. 
So this is a bashara for us who are all sinners that Allah can change anyone from anything. Some of the Sahaba used to do very evil things. Then Allah guided them to Islam and look what happened after that. So we should not look at the past. Rather, we should look at the future. Of the things that we learn about the Mahdi as well, and this is something that should give us pause for thought in the time frame that we live in, is that the ahadith mentioned, hadith is in Abu Dawood, that the Prophet wasallam said, the earth will be full of injustice. The earth will be full of injustice and tyranny. And the Mahdi will come and fill it with justice and with truth. Which means the world will be a very, very depressing place before the Mahdi. The earth will be full of injustice. And if you look at what is going on now, Allahu Musta'an. But we are, it looks like in that direction now, from bad to worse, from bad to worse. The world is getting worse and worse and worse. A time will come when the world will be full of injustice. The world will be dark and bleak and black. And in that darkness, Allah will send the light for the ummah. In that darkness, when it looks like there is no hope, Allah Azza wa Jal will send someone who will unite the Muslims and will then change the situation of the earth from injustice back into uh, justice. So this is one of the beautiful predictions that terrifies us but also gives us comfort. That you know, it will get bad, but after it gets bad, inshallah it will be good. Another concept that is mentioned about the Mahdi is that the Mahdi is from Medina and that the Mahdi will flee from Medina to Mecca. The Mahdi is raised in Medina and he is a Madani, but circumstances will happen. He will feel threatened and he will flee from Mecca to Medina. And this hadith is also mentioned in Abu Dawood where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a man shall flee from Medina rushing towards Mecca and the people will come to him even though he does not want them to come and they shall force him to accept the bay'ah and he will not want to accept the bay'ah. The Mahdi will not claim to be the Mahdi. And subhanAllah, I'm jumping the gun, but write this down. Anyone who says he's the Mahdi, you know he's lying. From the hadith. Anyone who claims in the basement of his mother's house while he's giving lectures on YouTube, I am the Mahdi. You know he's a liar right then and there. The Mahdi will not want to be the Mahdi. The people will force it on him. The people will say, we don't have a choice. You are our leader. We want you to be. And he will not want to accept it, but he will find himself having no other choice except to do it grudgingly. And that is why anyone who begins to tell the people, come to me, I am the Mahdi. And he has two people, five people, 10 people. He is a liar by the text of the Hadith. No Mahdi will claim to be the Mahdi telling you to come and give bay'ah to him. That is going to happen from the people. The people will love him. The people will respect him because of his akhlaq. Not because the Mahdi is saying, I am the Mahdi, give bay'ah to me. So this hadith mentions a very important concept that the Mahdi is from Medina, born and raised. One day he shall overcome a change. He'll become a righteous person. And most likely, uh, this is now we are reading in, most likely uh, certain political calamities will be taking place. And the rulers of their times will know that this person is a threat to us. Why? We do not know. Maybe in his ancestry with somebody, maybe rumors are spreading he's the Mahdi. We don't know. But the rulers will say this man is a threat. So the man will become scared, flee for his life. He will not have an army. Alone, single-handedly, he will run towards Mecca, fleeing towards Mecca. Why Mecca? Because according to our Sharia, once you enter Mecca, وَمَنْ دَخَلَهُ كَانَ آمِنًا According to our Sharia, when you enter Mecca, no one is allowed to hurt you. Even if you are a criminal in our Sharia, when you enter Mecca, nobody can touch you. You're under the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Mahdi will flee to Mecca, wanting Allah to protect him. Then what will happen? The next hadith, Aisha said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, one day he grew restless because he had a dream. And then he said, I saw something in my dream that made me restless. He's telling Aisha. It was wondrous, amazing, strange. I saw that a group of people from my ummah, they were attacking.
taking the Kaaba, and they reached the land called Al Bayda. Al Bayda. If you go to Haram, Mecca, Medina, you know Ajad, you know Ajad Hospital, Ajad Road. Before it is Bayda. So if you're going to Mecca from Ajad direction, before you get to Ajad, you will go through the land of Bayda or the valley of Al Bayda. So the Prophet ﷺ said, they will go through Al Bayda. And Allah will cause the earth to open up and the whole army will come crashing and be destroyed. This hadith is where? Bukhari and Muslim. Does it mention the Mahdi? No, no mention. What does it mention? An army of Muslims is attacking the Kaaba. Why would the army of Muslims attack the Kaaba? Go back to the last hadith in Abu Dawood, which is not in Bukhari and Muslim. A man from Medina shall flee, the Mahdi shall flee, seek refuge in the Kaaba, And the people will give him bay'ah. So then we add this hadith. The governments of the time will become terrified. Who is this political agitator? Send in the troops. The army will be destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, by the way, when this happens, this is the sign the Mahdi has come. Until that happens, nobody can claim to be the Mahdi. Anybody who claims to be the Mahdi is lying. Because even the Mahdi himself will say, no, no, it can't be me. I'm not good enough. He will deny it. And this is what true leadership does. True leadership, they don't want to be leaders. This is what the real leader does. So the Mahdi will grudgingly take the bay'ah. The army will be sent. When the army is destroyed by Allah, this is the sign. Everybody now knows this is the Mahdi. Until that happens, Please, brothers and sisters, don't be fooled by the sweet talk of the sweet talkers. Don't be fooled by the tongue of the vipers. There is no Mahdi that will preach he is the Mahdi. When Allah shows this sign, then we will all know that this person is indeed the uh, Mahdi. And what is the phrase, and none shall attack the Kaaba except its own people? This is a blessing from Allah and a sadness to us. The blessing from Allah. No non-Muslim army will ever attack Mecca. Alhamdulillah. This is a blessing from Allah. Let all these Islamophobes give their false memes and threats and whatnot. No non-Muslim army will ever even attempt to attack Mecca. It's not going to happen. As long as there are Muslims in this world, Mecca will never be attacked by non-Muslims. But who will attack Mecca? وَلَنْ يَسْتَحِلَّ الْبَيْتَ إِلَّا أَهْلُهُ Its own Ahl will attack Mecca. So the Prophet ﷺ predicted, no one shall attack Mecca except its own people. And this is sadness for us, but at least some comfort that externally Allah will protect the Kaaba. Until there are no Muslims left in the earth. When there are no Muslims left, then what's going to happen? There shall be an army from Ethiopia that will come and destroy the Kaaba when there are no more Muslims. This is towards the end of times before the actual trumpet is blown and that is towards the end of times after, uh, after the Muslims have uh, disappeared from earth. Of the, uh, of the characteristics of the Mahdi as well is that he shall be the leader of the entire Muslim Ummah. And this is an amazing phenomenon the likes of which we have not seen since the times of early Islam. The hadith goes as follows. Judgment will not happen until the Romans encamp at a land called Dabiq, which is a small village in Syria. Okay? Until the Romans camp at a land called Dabiq. And an army will come from Medina, who are the best of the people in the earth. And they will face this army from Rome in the village of Dabiq. And it mentions the great Armageddon. And then the hadith goes on. I'm not going to go into all of it. Uh, it basically mentions until this army will then go towards Constantinople and conquer Constantinople. Now, this hadith is very problematic for all commentators of our times. Nobody has a clear understanding of what this hadith means. And how can we? Because what is Constantinople? Istanbul. What does it mean they're going to conquer Constantinople? Allahu A'lam. Does it mean that it will go back into non-Muslim hands? Does it mean that Allahu A'lam? What does it mean? We have no idea. But this hadith mentions that that army 
which is going from Medina, which army is leaving from Medina towards the end of time? It's the army of the Mahdi. It will fight the Armageddon. It will be successful. It will continue fighting until finally it will conquer Qasthantiniya, which is Constantinople. So we have, and this is in Sahih Muslim, that's authentic. And the other hadith, Jerusalem, which is in Tirmidhi, which is not authentic. Put together, it appears we form some type of narrative. The army of the Mahdi will unify the Muslim world. It appears. We can make a tentative hypothesis. It's tentative, it's not explicit. The army of the Mahdi will unify the Muslim world and there shall be peace and justice and that point in time will be of the greatest periods known to Islamic history. Our Prophet ﷺ praised the Mahdi in a number of a hadith and he said, and this is one of those hadith that is in Sahih Muslim, so it is an authentic hadith, but the word Mahdi is not mentioned. The Prophet ﷺ said, towards the end of times there shall be a Khalifa who shall give money to the poor and he won't even count it. He's praising, it's gonna be generous. And another hadith that towards the end of times, can you imagine a time when Isa ibn Maryam will come down from the heavens, this hadith is a Muslim, and your imam is from amongst you. Wa imamukum minkum. And Isa will come down at Fajr time and he will be asked by the Imam, come lead salah. And Isa will say, no, the Iqama was called for you. So he will be led by one of you, takrimatan lihadihi al-ummah, as an honor to this ummah. This hadith is in Sahih Muslim, it is authentic. Does it mention the word Mahdi? No. What does it mention? Wa imamukum minkum. This is one of the most authentic hadith about the concept of the Mahdi. Who will have the honor that Isa will come down and he is the Imam? Who will have the honor that Isa will pray behind somebody from our Ummah? That's what the Prophet said. He will be from our Ummah and Isa will pray behind him. Who is that person? He is none other than the Mahdi. So the concept of the Mahdi is found in Bukhari and Muslim without the term Mahdi. But the term Mahdi is found in every single other book. In another hadith, also in Abu Dawood and Muslim Imam Ahmad, we learn that the Mahdi shall rule for seven years. In the authentic hadith, it says he shall rule for seven years. So we have a time frame as well, that the Mahdi will be powerful, the Mahdi will not be alive because he's going to be alive for many years, but he will rule for seven years. So he will establish his authority, his dominion, and he will rule for seven years. We also learn, and this hadith as well is in Sahih Muslim, so this is another one of those hadith that mentions the Mahdi indirectly. We also learn that there shall be a great war taking place, and the Muslims will be successful, and a rumor will be spread that the Dajjal has come out. So their Imam will take the army to try to find the Dajjal, but it will be found that the rumor is not true. When they have found the rumor is not true, lo and behold, the Dajjal will come at that point in time. So we learn from this, again the word Mahdi doesn't come. We learn from this, when will the Mahdi come? Before the Dajjal. If you attended on Wednesday, my lecture series I'm giving, I said the Mahdi is the last of the minor signs that links to the major signs. Now you understand why. The Mahdi is the last of the minor signs that links to the major signs. In the time of the Mahdi, the Dajjal will come. The Muslims will attempt to fight the Dajjal back and forth. Will they be successful? No. No one can kill the Dajjal, not even the Mahdi. Who can kill the Dajjal? Only one, and that is Isa ibn Maryam. But what will the Mahdi do? the Mahdi will provide peace and stability for the people with him. Those that are with the Mahdi, some protection will be given. Some safety will be there. And they will be running and fighting in various places. Many will die shaheed, but the group will still be there. Until the hadith mentions in Sahih Muslim, this one, the, this army will be in Damascus, in, in, in Damascus, in Damascus. And they will be praying in the Umayyad Mosque. The hadith doesn't say Umayyad Mosque, the hadith says with the white minaret. And pretty much by unanimous consensus, the white minaret is the minaret that was built, one of the earliest masjids that is still 
uh, standing today and being used today is the Umayyad Mosque built by Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, 1,350 years old, the same structure, continuous masjid. And he built it with a beautiful white minaret, perhaps not even knowing the hadith. And the hadith mentions that the Muslims will pray in Damascus in front of the white minaret. And as the iqama is given for Salat al-Fajr, lo and behold, they will see Isa coming down, holding on to two angels. And he will come down, they will pause Fajr until he comes down. You don't have to ask identity when somebody comes from the heavens, okay? It's pretty obvious who that person is going to be. You don't have to wonder already that the Dajjal has come. Already things have happened. They're waiting for him to come. They're literally waiting. When, it, when is Isa going to come? So they're there in Damascus waiting, waiting, waiting. When he comes, they know exactly who it is. So as soon as he comes down, the Imam... Hadith doesn't say Mahdi. The Imam, your Imam, will offer him the Salah. And he will say, no, the Iqamah was given for you. You go ahead and lead. And then, after this, there is no mention of the Mahdi whatsoever.